Really pleased to see you this morning. It feels like only a week ago that uh, I did an assembly for you. Um, each of our values are painted permanently on the wall above the projection screen. Those values are things that are really important to how we do things and how we conduct ourselves and how we want you to conduct yourselves in school and around school. We think that they're really going to help us to do well. And you'll see at the bottom of the screen is the value that this assembly is focusing on in particular. Because we want you to feel proud to be part of this school. That's what we want. Now, wanting something doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen very suddenly. I know many of us feel really positively about being part of Arnold Hill. Positively for all sorts of different reasons, because we're all sorts of different people. But that's what we want to happen, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Now, looking at you, this crowd of faces, it just reminds me that we are part of a busy, overpopulated world with many many people. We are part of one big group on planet Earth. It's huge. And it is quite mind-boggling when you start to look at the numbers of people in this group that we belong to on this planet in space. And there's a website that um, I went on on Sunday. I've been on it once before, a few years ago. And it's called World Population. And if you go on there, it actually charts the size of the world's population. And it's constantly changing. You can see the numbers constantly flickering and changing. Actually, it's always going up. But it goes down a little bit, and then it goes up a lot. But it's continually going up. And the count on Sunday, at around lunchtime, just before I had my lunch, was just under 7.5 billion people on this planet. That's a huge number of people. A huge number of individuals. And you're one of them. In this country alone, on Sunday, at lunchtime, it was 64.1 million people in the UK, in this country that we belong to, that we're part of. 64 million people on this island. And if you look a bit closer to home, there's almost three quarters of a million people in Greater Nottingham, that area around the city. And if you look into the city, then there's just under a third of a million people in Nottingham City. There's a lot of people on this island, a lot of people in this area. Nottingham is not one of the most densely populated cities, thank heavens. If you look at Arnold Hill, there's just under 1,700 of you in this school. We're lucky. We've got a large school area, just over two miles around the academy. The perimeter is just over two miles. So we've got plenty of space, which is a real blessing, because many schools and academies fight for space, and there isn't a lot of space to play in or walk around. But there's a lot of us here. And in each tutor group, well, in each year group, there's around 260 in each year group. In each tutor group, there's just under 30 students. And then there's you. So in this busy, busy world, there's you. And there's many other individuals. And each of you is very different. And each of you has a lot in common with other people. We are all part of one group but we're also part of many different groups. Our influences and our membership is very different, but they cross over. Now, you're part of many different groups. The first one, I suppose, would be family. We're all part of very different families. Some of them are very similar in terms of their makeup and their members, but they're all different, whatever you say. The characters, the things that you do, the things that you all enjoy together, or the way that you operate together or apart. All families are incredibly different. But you are part of that family, and you belong to it. And you'll have very strong feelings about being part of that family. Similarly, you're part of a community. Not just the street where you live, but the local area where you've grown up or where you live at the moment. When you're at your primary school, you were part of that primary school community. So your community is that area around where you live. And you'll have feelings about your community. Strong feelings, because it's where you belong, or sometimes it's where you feel you don't belong. But a feeling of belonging is really important, because it makes for happier, healthier people. You're also part of a friendship group, and your friendship groups have been changing ever since you left home and started going uh, to school from five years old and so on. 
you make friendship groups. They're a bit fluid, they change, and you choose people who you feel comfortable with, who you feel you share values with. They might make you laugh, you might have something in common with them. And coming into secondary school at year seven, again, your friendship groups will be slightly more fluid and changeable because you're choosing people that you're comfortable with and that you feel is right. And over time, those friendship groups settle and you'll have some very strong friends that you came through with. And I know there'll be people in here who are proud to have certain friendships. I've spoken to some of you already at break and lunchtime about how long you've known some of your close friends and how you look after each other and now you're really excited about coming to secondary school. And it's lovely hearing people being proud of the friendships they've got and talking about what those friendships give them. But you're part of many different groups. Some of you will have a faith, some of you won't. But those with a faith will have strong feelings about belonging to that faith and what you do and the values behind it and will feel proud to have that faith. And whatever group you belong to, people have strong feelings about it. Nowadays, with social media, many of you will be part of a following. Some of you will follow certain Instagram accounts or Twitter accounts or people on YouTube. I've got two daughters and I know that they follow certain people on YouTube. I haven't a clue who they are, but I know what they do and what they talk about. But who we choose to follow and who we choose to be friends with reflects our personalities and our interests and gives us a strong sense of belonging. And we want you to feel part of this academy. We want you to feel proud of this academy. But that doesn't happen over time. It's something that's earned. We, as you can probably tell, are really proud of this building, and I hope you are too. I sense that from talking to you. I think many of you are proud of how you look, because when I see how you present yourselves, you continue to keep up a high standard. You should be proud. Great building. I said to you last week, we want it to be a great academy. And if people feel proud of where they are, then we've got a much better chance of making it and keeping it a great academy. Hands up who can tell me, oh, well, I've written it up there. <laughs> who is this chap? What's he famous for? Yes. Yes. Fantastic, President of the United States. He achieved something quite significant. Can anyone tell me what he achieved? Yes. Absolutely. He led his country um, and the groups of people in America out of slavery during the Civil War. And he said something very important that I think rings true about my feelings about this academy and you and our school. He said, I like to see a man proud of the place in which he lives. And I like to see a man live so that his place will be proud of him. And in those days when they said man, they meant mankind and men and women too. And I think it's really, really important that someone is proud of the place that they belong to or the place that they are. And if the place or the group is proud of them, then there's no limit to what those people can achieve. You see in sports many times, uh, particularly in football, people celebrating. In football, you see people like Joe Hart there, sometimes grabbing their club badge on their shirt. Sometimes you see them kissing the club badge when they've just done something fantastic that they're proud of. And it's a very strong feeling of being proud to have achieved something. And what you see footballers doing there is celebrating what they've done or what their team's done, but also saying, I'm part of this club and it means something to me. Usually the fans go wild when they see that because it's like saying, we're all in this together. I'm proud to be part of this group that we belong to. And it's a strong feeling to be proud and it develops over time. You don't just feel proud because you win, although that can make you feel proud. You don't just feel proud because you achieve things. You can feel proud for many different reasons. Sometimes it's just when you're working together with a group of people that you feel it's right with, that everyone's doing their thing, everyone's pulling their weight and doing their bit and listening to each other. And being part of a team can make you feel proud. Being part of a group with similar values can make you feel proud. We can and should be very much proud of this building, but it's what we do in this building that really counts. It's what you do in this building that really counts. And when you get that feeling of pride, I belong to that school, I go to Arnold Hill, doesn't my uniform look good? 
It makes you feel good. And it gives you a much better chance of continuing to do good things and make good choices. It's a really strong feeling. I love that picture. Because some pictures you can really identify with how the person is feeling. You could say it's an awesome feeling. But feeling proud really does raise your self-esteem and make you feel good about where you are and what you're doing and where you're going. I talked to you last week about flicking a switch. Because when you decide to do something, that's a really important decision. Many people don't. But if you're someone who decides to achieve something, that will make a huge difference. And you don't have to be proud at the end of something. You don't have to be proud at the finish. But you should be proud if you've decided to do something. I walked past here last night, and I saw the large number of people in the auditions. Hands up if you came to the auditions last night. Hands up high. You should be proud. Because, thank you, hands down. When I stood outside with a visitor looking in at the auditions of the large number of people who were saying, I'm going to take part in this Grease production. I want to audition, and I want to be part of this. And I saw people auditioning, and I showed the visitor, and we just looked in from outside, and then we saw this huge round of applause as the people watching celebrated and said, well done to those people that were auditioning. And I just turned to the visitor, and I said, what do you think? And he said to me, that's awesome. And seeing you taking part and wanting to try something and stretch yourself was really impressive. Well done to those that took part. You should be proud of just that, what you did yesterday. But you get many opportunities. And I don't want any single day to go by without you taking up one of those opportunities and thinking, I'm going to give it a go. I'm someone who gives it a go. I'm going to try that. Because that's a good reason to feel proud. Because if you try more things, there's a much better chance of you finding things that are absolutely right for you. This gentleman here, his name's Steve Jobs. He was responsible for, um, he was the powerhouse behind the, the company Apple, who make iPods and iPhones and many other products. And what he was known for, for the people that he worked with, was they kept bringing him new ideas and new designs. And he'd often say, no, I don't like it. It's not good enough. And he'd send it back. And he did that, not because he was mean, but because he was aiming really high for a high standard of perfection. He wanted his products to be incredibly innovative and to be incredibly sleek and well-designed and attractive. And if they didn't meet those high standards, he sent people back. And one of the things he was proud of was not the things that he'd done this way, but the things that he had chosen not to do. And sometimes, making a decision not to do something is something that you should be proud of. I mentioned to you last week, we get various choices. And sometimes just leaving something and not going in that direction is a good reason to be proud. Whatever you do today or tomorrow, make sure that you can look back on yesterday and think, yeah, I'm glad I did that. You can't change what happened yesterday, but you can change what happened today. And it's a good feeling, a strong feeling, to look back and be proud of what you did yesterday. So, get involved. Take these opportunities, see what you can do. You never know until you've tried it. Flick that switch and decide to achieve something, whether it's joining a club or an activity, or asking a particular question about something that you haven't asked before in a lesson. You've just let it go. There are many, many opportunities in this academy, now and throughout the year, for you to get involved, whether it's clubs, whether it's sports, whether it's very other activities or charity or money raising events that will come along. Get involved, take that opportunity and don't let a single day go by without you giving a chance to get involved and be proud that you have got involved. 